were not out long before the enemy made their appearance, advancing slowly. We could see them for a half a mile, as the country is quite level and no undergrowth. They soon drove in our skirmishers, and firing commenced. One could plainly see the Blue Coats army in fine order. The order was given to up and at them, which is no quicker said than done. And when that was, awful roar of cannon and musketry. Men falling and groaning, officers giving commands, the balls flying, thick as sleet. Cheer after cheer went up, and on would push the rebels firing and yelling. The Yankees were given back, and on our pushing forward, pitched three Negro regiments against us, and all acknowledged that they fought well. We walked over many a woolly head as we drove them back. The Yanks couldn't stand before Georgia boys, and finally gave way and ran, our boys pursuing. We got all their artillery, eight pieces, and took about 400 prisoners, and killed about the same number. How our boys did walk through the Negroes. They would beg and pray, but it did no good. We drove them about five miles when a halt was ordered. We built big fires, and then how did we enjoy? Captured coffee, sugar, hams, bread, and everything else. We remained about three hours in this position, and then returned to our old camps, kivered with honor and glory. Our regiment lost 97 killed and wounded. Company A lost one man killed and eight or 10 wounded. Captain Morrison was badly wounded in the thigh. To sum up the whole thing, we whipped the Yankees badly, and they acknowledge it themselves. Our brigade did honor to themselves and their country. Proud old Georgia, I never have cause to be ashamed of Colquitt's brigade. Our adjutant lieutenant, J. 